select shell, move that to the side here. Do the same over here. Just move them to the side. So grab all these, move them to the side. So now I'm going to really lay these out in a in a way that makes sense to me. So we're just going to click these tools and rotate this guy. Rotate this guy. I'll put this guy right here. So we want to kind of fit this together in an as efficient way as possible. Then we can scale this up to kind of fit inside here, like that. Now all these guys we can tuck inside here. I'm going to move this over here. Just trying to stick them in wherever they might fit. And you can see that they don't fit yet. But that will fix that in a second. Move this guy here. Let's see, let's rotate this guy to go like there. Again, same with this. It's going to kind of fit along here in the corner. Put him here and him here. And these guys, what we're going to do is we're going to grab that edge, right click, go to edge, grab that one, and click this button here. This is the cut UVs. So now I can select this UV and select shell, and it only grabs those two faces. So now I can move them over here. I can kind of tuck. You know, just kind of tuck these guys wherever they fit. Try not to scale them too much. So it's kind of like a puzzle piece. I'll do the same thing. Cut. Select that shell. And move it here. So now we have all our pieces laid out on our UV shell. In our UVs. Like so. I can kind of lower this guy down some. Okay, so now we have that done, we can actually generate our maps. Let's delete the history here. Let's name some stuff, So, because you, so, you saw in the outliner I was kind of having a hard time picking things out. Let's name this Low Arch. And I'll control H to hide that. And let's select our bricks and our other arch piece and combine those together. Mesh combine. And delete the history. And call that high arch. So now if we go to our outliner, we have some history objects in here. That's okay, we can delete those. We got a low arch and high arch. So that makes things a little easier. So we can display our low arch again. So now we just have these two objects, low arch and high arch. Okay, so let's go to rendering, lighting, shading, transfer maps. Click this button and it brings up the transfer maps dialog box. We have lots of different options here. So we had our low arch selected so it automatically assigned it to the target meshes which is exactly what we want to do. The low res mesh is our target. We select the high res and go to source meshes here and add selected so now high arch shape is selected as our source, which is right what we want to do exactly. Okay, now we want to choose what maps we want to make. And as you can see here, in Maya 2008, we have lots of different maps that we can choose to make. We want to make a normal, so click normal. And let's go ahead and make a diffuse. And let's go ahead and make an ambient. Those three. So you can see here now we have normal map, diffuse color map, ambient occlusion map. And they're all selected as being what we're going to generate. Now in our folder options here, we can go choose where we want to save these two. I'm just going to save these as targets. And this is my normal map, so I'm going to say normal arch. I'm just going to save that to my desktop. Same with diffuse, go to desktop, targa. I'm going to say diffuse arch. Ambient inclusion, go to desktop, targa, ambient arch. Did I spell ambient right? No, I didn't. Ambient. There we go. Alright, now before we hit the button, we're going to go down here to Maya Common Output, and you can see that our map width and height is set to 256. Let's raise that up to 1024. Make a really nice big texture. 
And our ambient occlusion uses mental ray. So let's go to mental ray common output. And it's 256 also. Let's make it 1024. Like so. And now we should be ready. So once we have everything selected and look at looking things over like we want to, we can hit bake. And this will take a little while, so I may have to pause the recording. And but once you hit bake, you sit back and wait. And eventually the maps will be done generating wherever you save them to when you wherever you've designated them to be saved. So here I go. So here we are in Photoshop and you can see the results of the baking. This is my diffuse. You can see it took my red color I applied to the bricks and the kind of gray color I applied to the grout and it laid them out as if uh, I had gone through and colored it like that in texture in Photoshop when it's actually just taking that color information from the bricks themselves. So with the ambient occlusion this is kind of a, a way that we can create detail. And of course the Cru de Gras, the normal map. And this normal map can be used to create detail where the illusion of de detail where there is none. So just to demonstrate that, I'll go back into Maya, close, and let's hide all the high res stuff. You can see my low res cage now with my map applied. I'm going to the material attributes. And you can see that the normal map is applied to this material. So if I create a light, lights, well not an ambient light, let's create a spotlight. Or even better, a point light. Hit 7 on my keyboard to activate the real-time lighting. And you can see, oh, I don't really see anything, but if you go to render, high quality rendering, now you can see that when I move the light around, those bricks that aren't really there, all of a sudden look like that they're 3D and are actually casting shadows based on where the light's located. But if I go to shading, wireframe on shaded, you can see that there is no geometry there. That's all being created from the normal map. Like so. And the one thing that's cool about that transfer services uh, abilities is if you apply a bump map to your high res, that bump map will then be applied to your normal map. So then even if I had applied a bump map to these brick surfaces, instead of being perfectly smooth like this, they would apply that grain or whatever you want to apply to it also. And it'll keep that information too. But that's the basics of generating a normal map using the transfer transfer surfaces abilities of Maya 2008 thanks i hope you enjoyed it